Hello, it is Friday, December 17th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. And today, of course, we will be solving the Friday New York Times crossword puzzle. So our first themeless puzzle of the week after yesterday's very ambitious and well-illustrated theme in that puzzle. Uh, today, a themeless puzzle by Evans Clinchy. That is an interesting, distinctive name. Evans Clinchy. I like it. Um, first, though, I would like to thank Calixto Navarro, Victoria Rajishka, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster for bringing us this installment of the Daily Solve. They are uh, benefactors in the new the uh, Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash Daily Solve, where you can also get access to a wealth of bonus video solves, including this week's um, solve of five puzzles constructed by members of the Daily Solve community who uh, constructed those puzzles and published them in the uh, Daily Solve Discord chat server. And that's free for anybody to join. So go ahead and find a link to that in the description field underneath the video as well. And you get an extra channel in that Discord server if you're a Patreon subscriber. So thank you so much to everybody who has contributed to the Patreon campaign. I very much appreciate it. And um, before we solve today's crossword, I would like to, as usual, um, discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle um, with some comments that people have left uh, about it. And Kathy Swope explains that a hodad, a phrase with which I think I was unfamiliar, I can't, I don't know, it might be something that I knew at one point or have heard because I actually grew up in essentially a surfing community. Um, a play, well, I mean, I, I didn't grow up a surfer, but I grew up in proximity to surfing. And Kathy Swope explains that a hodad is defined as a non-surfer who frequents surfing beaches and pretends to be a surfer. And she also mentions that Boggle, my second favorite word game after Scrabble, consists of 16 lettered dice and a gridded container to shake them in. Points are scored by making words out of adjacent letters. Very fun. And on that topic, Crossword Radio replies to say that this grid, yesterday's grid, Thursday's grid, is actually 16 by 14, different from the standard 15 by 15 weekday size. I think I might have miscounted. I noticed that it was an abnormally sized grid, but I think I might have gotten the count wrong. And Crossword Radio continues, I assume that was to fit the 4 by 4 boggle game exactly in the middle, rather than being off center. Yes, that makes perfect sense. If it were a typical odd numbered, um, if it had typically odd dimensions of length and height, it would be unable to center an evenly sized square. And also speaking of word games, actually, I found uh, someone on the um, Daily Solve Discord chat server in the Other Puzzles channel mentioned a game called um, Babel Royale. I had never heard of this game before. It's a computer game and it's available on Steam. And uh, I, I loaded it. I've I, it's, it's free to play for the moment. It's in early access. I don't know what the plan is for it eventually, uh, but you can load it up and it's sort of a real-time multiplayer Scrabble game. You, um, all of the players are plonked down on the playing field and you start as, an, as the letter A and you are given random tiles with letters the way you are in Scrabble, the, the word spelling game, and you have to continually add on to your A as you get these random letters and you keep going and there are, you know, the, the eventually you can lose through various means. I'm not going to explain the entire game, but it's uh, the, the last person standing out of, I don't know, up to, I think a hundred people possibly. I'm not sure how many people play each round, but it seems like quite a few. <laughs> uh, the last person standing wins the round and I played a few rounds of it. It's very fun. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because I was considering perhaps live streaming it on this channel. So do let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in watching. I would have to find an appropriate time um, probably uh, evening British time where I'm located so that uh, people in North America would also be able to view it during relatively ordinary hours. So let me know. I might I might look into doing that. Anyway, um, boy, all that said, why not? Let's solve a crossword. That was quite a lot of preamble, wasn't it? So, as I said before, this is, of course, the Friday New York Times crossword constructed by Evans Clinchy, who seemed, I, I looked up Evans uh, before, the, uh, before the video, and uh, he's constructed a few, a few New York Times puzzles, not, not a huge number, but definitely several, so um, has been around the block before. 
And this crossword was edited, as always, by Will Shorts, who has edited quite a few uh, New York Times crosswords, it's fair to say. Ready to get started? I would say so. Okay. Popular Korean rice dish. Could be bibimbap. Um, I don't remember what bibimbap, I don't remember the translation. I did know that at one point, and now I can't remember. That's unfortunate. I, I think it might be something like with an egg. It might be something along those lines, actually, now that I think about it. All right. Bubble tea. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Boba. There we have sort of a thematic, uh, sort of slightly thematic uh, connection, even in a themeless puzzle. Boba, the um, tapioca ball tea drink. All right. Box Christmas um, Overture, Oratorio, perhaps? Oratorio seems more likely than Overture to me. Overture, I don't, Christmas, I don't know what Bach would be composing an Overture for. So maybe maybe a Christmas Oratorio? Can I spell? There we go. Does that work? He once wrote, I became insane with long intervals of horrible sanity. Uh, Poe must be Edgar Allan Poe. That's, that's uh, distressing. <laughs> um, or not. I don't know. Maybe there's actually something sort of... I don't know. It's ambivalent, I suppose. Ticks off could be Iyers or or Irks, actually. Although, probably not Irks, because BK doesn't look very likely. So Iyers as a verb, which I think happened in the crossword fairly recently. Iyer as a verb. Amp knob. So a knob on a... Um, pr I'm, I'm guessing this is an amplifier for a musical instrument. Or I guess it actually could be an amplifier for a stereo system at home. Anyway, you could have bass and treble knobs on, on that. All right. Uh, minute or minute could be, I mean, if it's minute, it could be itsy bitsy. Is that possible? Let's look at these crosses. Is this Assyria maybe? Yeah. Ancient land that included parts of modern Iraq and Turkey, Assyria. And Sophia Loren title role of 1953. Um, I don't know this, but I'm wondering based on the crosses if Sophia Loren played Aida in a film maybe? Seems possible. And towered over. Oh, maybe this isn't itsy bitsy because towered over looks like bestrode, didn't it? You just talk about someone bestriding the globe. They're towering over the globe. They're a titan of whatever their their field is. An oven setting could be broil uh, or grill here in the UK. So maybe, maybe not itsy bitsy, but maybe itty bitty. There we go. How about that? And northern New Jersey County, I don't know, it looks like maybe Morris. I'm not familiar with the county, but that sounds plausible. And Keene, who drew the family circus, Bill Keene, that looks right. So Morris and quarters feed into them. Quarters feed into them. I don't know, is it sort of quarters going into some kind of coin-operated machine or slot? I don't know. What about this? His debut album was 1987, Rhyme Pays. Is there any chance this is Ice-T? Jedi Foe? Yeah, maybe. Jedi Foe and Star Wars could be the Sith. Second. Quarters feed into them. Why am I not seeing what that is? That's irritating. What about this? Ah. Ah, that... That feels good, or that hits the spot, or something like that, I wonder. Because it's not aha, it's not inspiration or surprise, it's ah, which looks like a feeling of satisfaction or relief. What about this? Follower of FDR, uh, Harry S. Truman, so, or sorry, follower of Franklin Delano Roosevelt with, uh, with the name abbreviated, so we will also abbreviate his successor, Harry S. Truman or HSD. I wonder if it could be that hits the spot it fits. Let's check the crosses. Draw counterpart. Draw. Draws in an even score? I'm not sure. First name in UN diplomacy. Could be Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of the United Nations. That's pretty plot. Oh, and here's, we actually haven't seen very many of these recently. Sometimes we go through spates of, we, we, we get a whole spate of these, but not recently. This first name thing. So they, for whatever reason, this is a convention in New York Times crossword cluing that first name in UN diplomacy means both. It's simultaneously, this first name thing means 
a preeminent name in the given field or area, UN diplomacy in this case, but also literally that person's first name, their given name. So Kofi rather than Anon. And it's just a it's just a thing. That that bit of clue always does double duty in New York Times crossword cluing convention. So keep a lookout for it. All right. Per could be each or a pop. You know, three a pop, for instance, costs three for each one. Passing financial concern. Passing financial concern. I'm not sure. Tears or tears. It doesn't look like it ends with, and I guess it could end with an S if this is an E, for instance. What about this? Draw counterpart, right? I'm still not sure. How about this? It's made by coagulating soy milk. Oh, tofu must be. I don't know that I knew that. That's that's very interesting. That's so fascinating, actually. <laughs> I find that really interesting. So sort of in, in the same way that cheese is made from dairy milk, tofu is made from soy milk in sort of a similar process. Tofu, I guess, is sort of the curdles, the curds of, of soy milk. Wow, I did not know that. That is incredibly interesting. All right. Anyway, draw counterpart. Is this stud? Is this something to do with poker? I actually don't know what I don't know what a stud is in poker, but I but I know that it's a term associated with it. Pleasantly flavorful. I don't know. Let's let's keep let's let's head back to where we where we were before. So if this were iced tea, then second could be. I don't know. Why do I not see this fast finish? Question mark. So there's some kind of pun or wordplay here. Fast. Oh, fast. You, you. I see. So the pun is around the word fast. So it doesn't mean faster than quick. It means fast as in abstaining from from eating. So the the finish of a fast would be a meal. And quarters feed into them. So, oh, okay. When I had this S and this I, I thought, is it somehow semis or semis? But for some reason, I was only able to think of that as a big rig, a truck, a uh, a big truck. I don't know why. But of course, it's semifinals. Quarterfinals feed into the semifinals. That don't know why that took me so long. And se- to second something is to echo it, to repeat it. There we go. And indeed, Ice-T's 1987 debut album was Rhyme Pays. And so here we have, wow, wow, wow. Holy salami? I don't know. Is that a phrase? I'm just saying it because it fits with the crosses. Uh, Holy, oh, smokes. That might be more likely. That actually sounds like a phrase I've heard before. Although I thought it was holy smoke. Um, I don't know. Let's see. It's all downhill from here. Shook one's defender in sports lingo. I don't know. Competes in the aqua bike world championship. Ah, Actually, that K looks quite likely because I've never, though I've never heard of this, it sure sounds like a jet skiing competition. So competes in the Aquabike World Je- Championship could be jet skis. That looks plausible. And the original Frankenstein wasn't one, despite popular belief. Monster? Is this getting at the sort of the thing that, that, that everyone for the past, I don't know, 15 years or so has been obsessed with pointing out, which is that uh, Frankenstein... It was the doctor and Frankenstein's monster was his creation, but actually Frankenstein, the doctor, was the true monster because of the way he acted. I don't know. Okay. Do some light cardio could be to jog. And kind of salami. Uh, Genoa. Genoa salami. Um, Genoa sausage. All right. Blank, you experienced Jimi Hendrix album. Are you experienced? Classic album by the, uh, technically not a Jimi Hendrix album, but rather an album by the Jimi Hendrix Experience, Jimi Hendrix's band. That's very, <laughs> very pedantic correction in in the spirit of the Frankenstein's monster bit, but it is technically true. Uh, Are You Experience is an album by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Anyway, um, it's all downhill from here. Shook One's Defender in sports lingo got... It, it, got looks pretty likely there. Got on it, got over. Oh. Was I looking at the... Oh, no, never mind. Mammal with four toes on the front feet and three on the back. That's a tapir. I guess I just didn't... I guess I didn't look at this clue before. Oh, so if one shook one's defender, perhaps got open. That would make sense because then you could say, I'm open, you know, throw me or pass to me or whatever. Okay. Throw to me, that is. Uh, here we have, c'est un article défini. This is French. 
it's a definite article. So it could be lay, L-E-S, in this case, the definite article, the definite plural article. So this is the, but for plural nouns. Um, so we have a, an entire clue in French. After yesterday, I think yesterday had maybe three French clues. Um, but I don't think any of them were entire sentences, like this one. All right, it's all downhill from here. Himalayas? Does that mean somehow work? Oh, maybe. Because a tear could be a hot streak, so tears could be hot streaks. And indeed, there was an E before this A. A draw counterpart, it does look like stud, doesn't it? And pleasantly flavorful. Why do I not know what this is? <laughs> it's irritating. Passing financial concern. And then it's all downhill from here. Him. What does that mean? That the Himmel... Could it possibly be that? I don't really understand. Anyway, let's... Um, I just realized we've not really checked out this entire corner of the grid, this northeastern corner. So the 5th century invaders, uh, the Visigoths, looks like. And a facial expression could be a visage. Uh, visage, Visigoths, sort of a little bit of an echo there. That's my cue, could be I'm on, on stage, for instance. A challenge in an alley. Challenge in an alley, not sure. Uh, offline activity question mark. Offline activity. Not sure. Sugar in one's coffee, e.g. And a place to buy overpriced drinks. I don't know. Dutch-speaking Caribbean island. Can't bring it to mind. And insinuated could be got at. Wisconsin Governor Tony, I'm not sure. Offline activity. Sugar and one's coffee. Place to buy overpriced drinks and ink. Boy, I sort of ran out of steam pretty quickly over here, didn't I? I'm sure there are plenty of things that you are spotting that I am not, so I apologize for that. Ink. Write or sign or, I mean, it could be a verb or it could be a noun, but if it's a noun, ink text or oh could be tattoos could be tats actually it's often referred to as ink is this aruba the island oh yeah a place to buy overpriced drinks is a mini bar and sugar and one's coffee oh i see a solute so dissolved a dissolved solid i guess solute oh that must be it and a challenge in an alley. Oh, a split in a bowling alley. Of course, I kept trying to think of some something someone might say to you in an alleyway in a city or something. But no, not at all. It's a bowling alley. And so this refers to when um, you have to hit two bowling pins, but they're separated. And so they're split apart and it's very difficult. Anyway, offline activity. Could this be... Improv? What does that mean? Offline? Oh, I see. I see. Improvisation and you're, uh, you're, you're improvising. In other words, you're saying things that aren't your lines. They're not written down for you. So the, the activity is offline. It's off script, essentially. And that question mark is indicating there is some kind of pun or wordplay. And in this case, it's around the word offline. So Wisconsin governor must be Tony Evers, which I must admit, I didn't know. Okay. Madam across the Pyrenees. Um, so uh, that probably refers to um, madam, the French word for Mrs., but in Spanish, across the Pyrenees, the, the mountains. So senora in Spanish. And pleasant, oh, pleasantly flavorful. Oh, interesting. <laughs> is this sipid? That's so funny. So this is one of those cases in English, where there's a number of number of these, where we, we use the antonym of this, we use insipid all the time. It's a pretty common, relatively common word, I would say. But we've sort of forgot, at least I certainly rarely encounter sipid, the, I guess, pleasantly flavorful, pla flavorful counterpart to insipid, which sort of means without much flavor. It's banal in a way. 
Interesting. I um, I never really thought about that. Okay. Passing financial concern. I don't know. Oh. Oh. Maybe it's not sipid. Because this could be a state law. Sapid, maybe? That could relate to sapor, which is has to do with flavor, right? So maybe everything I said is, is wrong. What about this? Certain judges ruling. Oh, it could be let. It could be a sports thing. So some smears. One might be offensive. Deliberately damaged. Mean figures. And Milky Way and others. All right. Well, mean figures could be averages, the mean being the mathematical average of a series of numbers. A slump could be SAG. Milky Way and others. Could this be galaxies, estate? Oh, estate tax. All right. Sorry. So I didn't really talk about this after I put it in. So I think passing financial concern, this is another pun. We see that with the question mark. And I think the pun is around the word passing, and it means passing on or dying. So um, a financial concern around death, in this case, estate tax, the the uh, tax you pay on the inheritance that you pass on. Well, I guess actually, yeah, the passing, passing could be either passing on a person passing away, or it could be them passing their estate on to their children or, or whoever, whomever. Okay, so Milky Way and others are galaxies, and adjective to noun suffix, uh, ness. So, you know, sweetness. You're turning sweet, an adjective, into a noun, sweetness, with the adjective ness. He won a posthumous Pulitzer Prize in 1958. It must be Agi, the playwright, I would think. And to deliberately damage something is to sabotage it. Noticed, noted gift givers are the magi in the Bible, and one might be offensive. Offensive linemen, that's certainly a phrase I've heard. So then we have some smears are libel, which is um, uh, it's libel, I think, what, the written equivalent of slander, I suppose. And then it's hot stuff is lava. So this was sapid, so not sipid. So now I kind of want to look up sipid and see if it exists or if it's just one of those words where we don't really have, there isn't an opposite. Like whelmed isn't really the opposite of underwhelmed. Well, no, I suppose we have overwhelmed and underwhelmed, but we don't have whelmed. Whelmed in itself doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, in the same way that perhaps sipid doesn't mean anything and insipid, I don't know. I'll have to look it up. I'm really not sure. But anyway, we have sapid here. I hope that's correct. Is everything else correct? It's, I mean, this isn't a word with which I'm very conversant. So, yeah. I, I'm going to have to hope it, hope that's the case. All right. It has a duck float in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, I certainly don't know this unto itself, but I'm in the mind of Aflac, which came up in the crossword just yesterday or the day before. It was certainly this week. And it was clued as a company with a duck mascot or something like that. So I wonder if that is the case. And financing figures. This could be APR's uh, annualized percentage rates, I think, in um, uh, loans. You, you could finance a car or a, or something like that and have an APR, the pre- annual, annual um, your interest rate. Anyway, inclined could be prone. You could be inclined towards crosswords. Pr- uh, prone doesn't really fit there, but you, you know what I mean. You could be inclined to injury, prone to injury, for instance. All right. Have a ball. Have a ball. And a directive to talk. Directive to talk. Speak? Does this mean to a dog or something? Say speak. Directive to talk. Portmanteau for a dumpster diver eating anti-consumerist eater. Oh, I think I I think I know this. I think it's Frisian or something. Uh, I don't see how that fits. I can't find a version of that that looks like it fits the crosses, though. Oh, free gin, maybe, not Frisian. Free, free gin. So it's sort of a portmanteau. I see. So a portmanteau of free and vegan. There we go. Free gin. All right. So directive to talk is not speak and have a ball and then just peachy, possible cause of fatigue, and people, people. 
this doesn't look like Himalayas, doesn't it? This is the most baffling. This is the most baffling answer in the puzzle to me. I mean, sapid was a word I simply didn't know. But why does Himalayas mean it's all downhill for me? Does it mean if you're at the top of them? I mean, I don't understand. The Himalayas, you don't need to be on the absolute peak of a mountain, right? I mean, you could be halfway up a mountain, in which case it's not all downhill from there. There's still plenty of things that are uphill. So I don't understand it. I must be missing something about this. Just peachy. Possible cause of fat fatigue could be anemia. Could be lacking in iron, for instance. I think that came up in the crossword recently as well. Oh, I see. To have a ball could be to revel, to party. And just peachy could be lovely. A little too slick could be glib. Someone is glib. They're just being uh, a little too polished. And, oh, I see. People, people could be celeb. So this could be People Magazine, which covers celebrities. And then a directive to talk, I see. See me. So you might have a note on an assignment or something that says see me. And it means we need to talk. And there it is. There's the Friday puzzle. So uh, so sapid, I probably need to look up. And also sipid, just in case. And Himalayas. I'm very sorry if this is very clear. It's all downhill from here. I don't, I just don't understand it. I just don't understand. Because <laughs> I just don't, I just feel as though there are plenty of places you could be in the Himalayas in which it's not all downhill. Yeah, I'm just, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm missing something. Anyway, uh, an interesting puzzle. I, I would say a pretty classic, uh, themeless puzzle. Some some very widespread of answers. We had some some nice uh, uh, idiomatic speech like that hit the spot and hot streaks and some kind of trivia like Tapir, Kofi Annan, um, that sort of thing. We had uh, a French a French sentence. Oh no, not that. It was somewhere else here. And um, plenty of vocabulary, including vocabulary that was a bit new to me. So, uh, and then we started off with this little, I think boba is Korean, right? So I think we had bibimbap and boba crossing each other, which was sort of fun. Um, yeah, I would say I would say a pretty, pretty great Friday themeless puzzle. And could have been, I think this could be a tricky one, depending on, depending on, um, oh, you know, your particular area, specialty areas, or or how you, the puzzle was striking you on a particular day, I could imagine this one being being a, a tough. It gave me some. I had some tough crosses in this puzzle, especially I think in the corners. I think getting that hit the spot fairly early was a big help to me in uh, in the center of the grid. But what you, this puzzle has a feature that can I think can make puzzles um, much more difficult, which is when you get these little choke points um, when the corners are. Uh, blocked off with only a single cross in there. So that essentially means that you only really have two answers that are going to help you out inside there. You can get a state tax and you could get Sapid here or you could get Mini Bar and Visigoths here. But then after that, once you have those, there's nothing else anywhere at any other point in the puzzle that's going to in any way influence anything in this corner. After you get those two, it's completely sealed in in these corners. And that can be really challenging. If you struggle with something in there, you know that there's not, no matter how much you solve elsewhere, you're not going to get any more help than you already have. And um, that's certainly a feature I associate with later in the week puzzles. Um, because one of the, uh, obviously one of the, the best ways to unblock yourself in a crossword is to get more crosses. So anyway, um, and this puzzle had four of those, all four corners were, were choked off in that way. All right. But yes, I think a good, enjoyable puzzle by Evans Clinchy. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the solve. If so, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you know someone who might enjoy it, pass it on to them as well, either personally or um, through your online discussion forum or social media network of choice. I'd appreciate that as well. It's the only, um, only real tool that I have to grow the channel. So thank you to everybody who's done that. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. If you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve with a link in the description field underneath the video, of course. And as well as the perks I uh, enumerated at the beginning of the puzzle, 
at the benefactor level, you can also get this nice Daily Solve mug with a reminder to check the crosses emblazoned upon it. It's a nice mug. I like it. And I've been getting uh, positive reports from others who have received theirs about the quality, so I'm very happy about that. And finally, don't forget, you can check out the Daily Solve Discord chat server and chat with others who watch this series about crosswords, other puzzles, crossword construction, and the like. Uh, links to all these things in the description field underneath the video. So again, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday crossword, our second themeless of the week, and very possibly the most difficult crossword we've solved since last Saturday. We'll just have to see. I hope you'll join me for that. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Thank you.